Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. In the previous video, I was telling you about the methods of preparation of alcohols and I told you that there are three sources from which alcohols can be prepared. The first is from alkenes, the second is from carbonyl compounds and the third is from Gregonard's reagents. In the previous video, we discussed the methods of preparation from alkenes. In this video, we are going to do the second source that is from carbonyl compounds. How alcohols are prepared from carbonyl compounds. Okay, the pen seems to be a bit dead. Alright, so carbonyl compounds are compounds that have carbon and oxygen in them. So, when we want to prepare alcohols from carbonyl compounds, we again have two different ways of doing it. We can prepare them. What are the carbonyl compounds? They would be aldehydes, they would be uh, ketones, they would be carboxylic acid, and they would be esters. All the sources are all organic compounds or hydrocarbons that have oxygen in them too. So, carbonyl compounds or which have the carbonyl group. So, the first is... We can prepare alcohols by the reduction of aldehydes and ketones. We can get alcohols from aldehydes and ketones by their reduction. Oxidation is addition of oxygen and reduction is addition of hydrogen or removal of oxygen. We know these definitions of reduction and oxidation. In the case of organic chemistry, I think it is important to only remember these two definitions. Although in inorganic chemistry, we go into seven, eight definitions of, uh, six to seven definitions of reduction and oxidation. Anyway, when we talk here of reduction, we mean addition of hydrogen. So we can carry out the reduction of aldehydes and ketones and we can get alcohols. So aldehydes and ketones, aldehydes are those which have the functional group CHO and ketones would be COR dash. Both have the CO bond. The hydrogen is also attached to carbon. Therefore, the CO is uh, a carbonyl compound. So they are reduced to the corresponding alcohols by catalytic hydrogenation. Hydrogenation means reduction. Hydrogenation means addition of hydrogen. And catalytic means that you need a catalyst. The catalyst that is used is usually the metals that is platinum, palladium and nickel are usually used as catalysts. Sometimes reducing agents like sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride are also used. Unlike the catalysts that are platinum, palladium and nickel which are only catalysts, the hydrogen is uh, the reduction, hydrogen is needed for reduction. These are reducing agents, they themselves act as the sources of hydrogen, that is sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. Now when you get the alcohol, aldehydes yield primary alcohols while when you have ketones, they yield secondary alcohols. Now as I explain these reactions to you, you will understand, it's pretty simple to understand why will you get primary alcohols always and why will you get secondary alcohols from ketones. You know, if you understand what bond is breaking and where the addition is taking place, during your exam, all you have to do is focus on that bond, the carbonyl part. And you will automatically, if you try to break that bond and see what adds where, you will get the answer even if you do not remember uh, individual reactions. So let us see what is happening here. RCHO, that is aldehyde plus hydrogen in the presence of palladium gives you RCH2OH. Now I, on purpose I have put the oxygen here to show you what the bonding is. So imagine what would happen when hydrogen is added. Hydrogen is H2, so H, H, let me write this as H, H, all right? And R, C, double bond O and H, this is the aldehyde. In the presence of palladium, what is happening? The hydrogen-hydrogen bond breaks. When the hydrogen-hydrogen bond breaks, both the hydrogens, they get their electron back. In this molecule, it is always the pi electrons which are easier to break. The pi bonds are easier to break because the pi electrons have more energy. 
So the pi electrons here, the second bond breaks. And since the pi bond breaks, oxygen gets back its electron and carbon gets back its electron. Sorry, I was showing it here and I showed it up here. Hmm. So when one bond here breaks, oxygen gets one electron and carbon gets one electron. Now what has happened is the two hydrogens are going to go and attach. For the formation of a bond, you need an atom which has one electron and another atom which has one electron. Both will contribute one electron each and they will share that pair of electron and a covalent bond will be formed. Okay, we are not going into the mechanism, nothing. We are just seeing what is adding where. So this hydrogen with one electron, now since they are separated, they are not bound anymore, this goes and attaches itself to oxygen and this hydrogen attaches itself to carbon. So what do you get? R, C, we had the O here and H, right? So what is happening? This hydrogen came and got attached to the carbon and this hydrogen went and got attached to the oxygen. Now do you see, what do you have? You have R, C, H, 2, O, H. Do you realize? It is R, C, H, 2, O, H, which is this molecule that is alcohol. So basically, if you just find the structural formula, pay attention on the structural formula of the compound, not the entire compound, but only that part which is going to react. In this case, it was the carbonyl part. And you focus on where the bonds are breaking and where are they joining. It becomes very easy for you to come to the final answer. Right? So you get an alcohol. And if you see this carbon to which the OH group is attached is attached to one other carbon. So it is a primary alcohol. Right? Now come to the ketone. RCOR- is the ketone. In the presence of sodium borohydride, which is a reducing agent, it itself provides the hydrogen for reduction. The reduction takes place and what do you get? You get R, C, again the oxygen is where the hydrogen will get attached and R dash remains as it is. So let us again go to what happened here. And once more, it is a hydrogen molecule which is being added. Why? Because it's a reduction. Reduction means addition of hydrogen, H2. So, let us go here again. It is R, C, double bond, O, R, dash. And let us say that hydrogen, H and H are adding to it. This bond has broken. Oxygen got its electron, carbon got, it, got its electron, even if the source is sodium borohydride. What do you get now? R, C, O and R dash we already have. So one hydrogen is going to come and attach here. So you'll get OH here and one hydrogen will come and attach itself to this carbon. So it will be R, C, H. So R, C, H, O, H, R dash, right? So that is what you get. And now the OH is attached to a carbon which is attached to two other carbon atoms. Do you see? The OH is attached to this carbon and this carbon is attached to an alkyl group on this side and an alkyl group on the other side, which means on both the sides it has carbons. So the OH group is attached, it has a secondary position. It is attached to a secondary carbon. So, in this case, the alcohol that you got was a secondary alcohol. This was a primary alcohol and this is a secondary alcohol. So, this is what is important to uh, remember here. How can you prepare alcohols from carboxylic acids and from ketones? You can get alcohols from carboxylic acids and from ketones by reducing them. Reduction can be done by catalytic hydrogenation. That is where you use a catalyst and you uh, have hydrogen gas. So the catalysts can be the metals platinum, 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 palladium and nickel. Or you can use reducing agents like sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. When the reduction takes place, aldehydes give you primary alcohols while ketones give you secondary alcohols. So this was preparation of alcohols from aldehydes and ketones. Let us come to the other carboxylic, uh, sorry, other carbonyl compounds. You can 
prepare alcohols from carboxylic acids they are also co groups they also they are also carbonyl compounds and esters are coor dash they are also carbonyl compounds so you can get them from carboxylic acids and esters so let us see how do we prepare them from carboxylic acids and esters carboxylic acids can very easily yield alcohols if we use lithium aluminum hydride if we use lithium aluminum hydride which is a strong reducing agent we get a very good yield of uh, alcohols but the problem with lithium aluminum hydride is that it is a it is an expensive um, reagent and if we only have to carry out the reduction we don't really have to use such an expensive reagent so what we do instead of using lithium or a reducing agent instead of using lithium aluminum hydride we convert the carboxylic acid into an ester and it is cheaper to convert an ester into alcohol so we will carry it out in two steps but let us first see how can we if we really need it for a very special uh, compound where we don't care about the cost of lithium, lithium aluminum hydride in that those conditions from carboxylic acid you can get the alcohol the corresponding alcohol again look here the c double bond o oh what is the structure of carboxylic acid c double bond o oh here the c double bond o and the oh it is not a reaction that will take place in one step but ultimately the double bond o o will be lost completely h2 will come here and you will have an oh the OH remains. So oxygen is removed, hydrogen is added, hydrogen is added, therefore it is reduction and the oxygen that is removed will be added to hydrogen to form water and thus you get RCH2OH. However, being expensive, commercially, instead of using lithium aluminum hydro hydro hydride, acids are reduced to alcohols by converting them into esters. So in order to reduce the cost of the production, when you have to commercially produce it, when you need very little quantities, you might use lithium aluminum hydride because you're not bothered about the cost and you're not using as much. But if you're commercially producing it, you will like to cut, cut your cost. So what will you do? You will re convert the acids, will be reduced to alcohols. How? They will be reduced by first converting them into esters and then following their reduction using catalytic hydrogenation just as we did in this case in the case of aldehydes in the same way we will first convert them into we will reduce them by converting them into esters and then we will carry out the catalytic reduction in the, that is using hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst and what is the catalytic what is the catalyst that we use we use the metallic catalysts like platinum palladium and nickel so here is the carboxylic acid rcooh with R dash OH, we make it react in the presence of an acid and in the presence that is an alcohol and in the presence of an acid. Now we choose the R dash. We choose the R dash based on what is the product that we want. Do we want only one kind of alcohol or do we want a mixture of alcohols? If you want the same kind of alcohol, you will, the R dash would be R plus one. That is, if this is a methyl group, it, this would be methyl ethanol, right? If this is ethyl group, this would be propanol. You will choose the R dash, that is alkyl group of the alcohol that you are using. You are using an alcohol to convert it into an ester and then you will be recovering the alcohol in the end. So some of the end product in a way you are using in order to, but the end product is not, is not the same alcohol. You will choose the R dash in such a way that the R dash is equal to R and C. That is the alcohol that you obtain. So what do you do? R C O O H in the presence of R dash O H, the H and O H will form water because it is catalyzed by acid and the R dash will take its place. So we have R C O O H and it is this bond that breaks and R dash O H it is this bond that breaks.
okay r dash and o and o and h the h and the o will get back their electrons so what happens here the hydrogen is replaced by r dash so you will get minus h2o oh and h will attach to form water and here you will get r c double bond o o r dash right now do you remember this o is different from this o it is not the double bond here when the bond breaks here now what are the bonds that are going to break one one bond between carbon and oxygen is going to break so when in the next step where hydrogenation takes place in the presence of in the presence of a catalyst then not only the pi the oxygen and carbon pi electrons not only do they break to give one electron here and one electron here then this bond also breaks giving one electron here and one electron here so when two molecules of hydrogen now there are four sites so you'll have two molecules of hydrogen which will be adding at every point every point will be taken up by a hydrogen so what do you get r c o okay is one part that we are getting one electron here one electron here and the second part will be a dot here o r dash so wherever there is a dot and the carbon has two you will get hydrogen say you put a hydrogen here put a hydrogen here put a hydrogen here so make it ch2 and here put a hydrogen here so r dash oh is an alcohol then r ch2 oh is an alcohol so you get alcohol from the ester but in the case of ester you if the r dash is such that it does not come out to be equal to r plus 1 then you will get a mixture of two alcohols but if you want the same alcohol you will have to choose the r dash in such a way that the value of r dash is r plus 1 so that you get the same alcohol in the end right so basically you know eh, this is just uh, tricking you if this is the product that you wanted then you will just take this alcohol and you will use that in order to convert the uh, carboxylic acid into ester. Use the same product, a little bit of the product and uh, use it as a reactant to convert it into ester and then you will get back your yield. You will get back the alcohol that you put in and you will also get back the, uh, you will also get back your, uh, I mean you will get the yield of alcohol that you want. So these were the methods of preparation of alcohols from carbonyl compounds. So with this I will end this video and in the next video we will continue with this topic where we'll talk about the preparation of alcohols from Grignard reagents. So if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up. If you wish to watch other videos of this chapter click the link that appears on top of your video and uh, well uh, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.